Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Wellness Minute, a show dedicated to putting your health in your hands by helping you learn what are the different health and healing practices that can help in the prevention, management, and sometimes treatment of various diseases. I'm your host, Dr. Abigail Ayapola, and on this episode, we're going to talk about colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer affects both men and women, and here to share some information about some preventative measures and all around wellness is Dr. Amina Keats, a local naturopathic doctor. Dr. Keats, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice? Sure, so as you mentioned, I'm a naturopathic doctor and I'm board certified in naturopathic oncology and I've specialized in integrative oncology for close to 14 years. I spent the majority of my career working in an integrative oncology hospital setting where I had the opportunity to support inpatients and outpatients. But in the last three years of my career, I transitioned to a private practice setting where I'm able to continue to support patients diagnosed with cancer. That's amazing and that's pretty impressive. Um, I'm humbled. <laughs> um, so since we're talking about colorectal cancer, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, we've heard that naturopathic medicine can actually, and natu natural therapies can actually help prevent cancer in general, colorectal cancer in particular. How? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to prevention, prevention is actually key when it comes to naturopathic medicine, mainly because prevention is one of the principles of naturopathic medicine. So it's something that I definitely focus on when I'm working with patients, whether they're diagnosed with colorectal cancer or mm -hmm. another cancer type. Mm -hmm. And there are actually a few strategies that I focus on when it comes to prevention because we want to change the internal landscape um, meaning we want to make the, the body um, inhospitable to cancer cells. Okay. And so there's a few ways that we can do that, uh, mainly through reducing inflammation, <clears throat> because when there's a state of chronic inflammation, cancer cells are able to grow and metastasize and proliferate, and that's something that we obviously don't want. And so we can achieve anti-inflammatory effects through nutrition <clears throat> and through supplementation. Okay. Another thing that I think about is uh, antioxidant support. So increasing the antioxidant status is going to be very important when it comes to cellular kind of protection from free radicals or carcinogens that are present. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we can do that through nutrition. We can do that through supplementation. Um, one of the antioxidants that, that I like to use is uh, green tea. So green tea has been associated with reducing the risk of colorectal cancer and breast cancer and a number of other different cancer types. And uh, in my clinical opinion, the, the best sources of green tea or the best types would be organic matcha tea and then also organic sencha tea. Okay, so you're uh, already jumping ahead of me with the, some okay. of the antioxidants. No, it's great, it's okay. great. Um, but before we get to some of those yeah. supplements and vitamins and sure. things like green tea, yeah. you said anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. Yeah. I've also heard that just food, diets, can yeah. help with cancer prevention. Absolutely. So we can absolutely use food as medicine. Okay. And in my practice, food is actually the, the foundation of any kind of individualized treatment plan that I create for a patient. Okay. So nutrition is really key, and again, we can achieve anti-inflammatory support and antioxidant support through uh, proper nutrition. So what kind of diet specifically so, could someone who wants to prevent, I want to prevent colorectal cancer in my future. Sure. Because I heard it's more prevalent in black communities and yeah. I just don't want that in my sure, life. Sure. What should I be eating now? So when it comes to colorectal cancer, um, population studies have shown a few links as far as the foods that we should avoid or minimize when it comes to reducing the risk. Mm -hmm. One is red meat consumption. Mm -hmm. So either minimizing red meat consumption or eliminating red meat consumption. And red meat meaning not only beef, but also things like veal and lamb and pork. Oh. Another thing that we want to minimize are simple carbohydrates. So basically sweets, things like cookies, candies, um, things made from white flour. So more whole grains is going to be important. And also fiber-rich foods are going to be very important. Eliminating or adding I'm in? sorry, adding okay. fiber-rich foods. So no red meats, mm -hmm. no simple sugars, carbohydrates, right. Right. Or, white or, sugar. Or minimizing simple sugars. Okay. 
And then adding in fiber. Adding in a fiber rich diet. Mm -hmm. So uh, things like fruits and vegetables, obviously, mm -hmm. more vegetables than fruit. Mm -hmm. Things like flaxseed, chia seeds are good sources of fiber. Legumes are good sources of fiber. Avocado is actually a good source of fiber and oh. a good source of healthy fat. Okay. Um, and then speaking of, of healthy fats, the omega-3 fatty acids are going to be very important when it comes to prevention of colorectal cancer. So things like um, wild salmon, um, wild sardines are good sources of omega-3 fatty acids, walnuts are a good source of omega-3 fatty acids. Mm -hmm. um, so things like that. Minimizing alcohol consumption is something else that we want to think about. Um, uh, proper hydration is something that we want to think about. Um, healthy oils outside of avocado would be extra things like extra virgin olive oil is going to be important. Mm -hmm. Flax oil is something that we want to think about too. Awesome. So when I, in my experience, the oil, is it the fish oil itself or is it the anti-inflammatory properties of the fish oil or some combination of that? So when I think of uh, reducing inflammation, fish oil is definitely at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So that's really a key supplement when it comes to reducing inflammation. Okay. Um, so, but it's also associated with reduced risk of colorectal cancer too. Specifically. Specifically, okay. yes. Good to know, good yeah. to know. So you talked about green tea and fish oil. Can you name a few other nutrients or vitamins um, that are helpful for preventing or managing colorectal cancer and how they're benefiting? So fish oil because of anti-inflammatory Sure, sure. Things. So another important thing is vitamin D3. So in my opinion, we should all be on some dose of vitamin D3 because most of us are deficient. And so I always advise patients to have their 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels measured at least two times per year so that we're taking adequate doses of that 25 vitamin. 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Yes. <laughs> um, because optimal levels are associated with improved survival rates mm -hmm. and also um, associated with reduced risk and reduced mortality as it relates to colorectal cancer and a number of other different cancer types. So vitamin D3 is definitely key. Um, so green tea, vitamin D, fish oil. Yes. That's okay. Absolutely. What's the green tea doing? We've got the vitamin D3 and the fish oil. Sure. So when it comes to green tea, there's a, a specific uh, chemical found in green tea called EGCG. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are high levels, as I mentioned, um, of EGCG in the organic sencha and matcha tea. So this is the part of the plant that's been studied as far as having um, uh, being associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. Okay. Um, so with green tea, it can help to, well, number one, it's an antioxidant, so it has the ability to protect the cells from any damage. When we think about cell damage, we're concerned about uh, potential, potential movement toward carcinogenesis or the cancer process. So okay. the antioxidant portion is key. Um, when it comes to active disease, green tea or this EGCG can potentially reduce um, something called angiogenesis or blood cell growth or blood vessel growth to cancer cells. So okay. it stops that process from happening. Okay. Um, and so, yes, a, a lot of great benefits with, with green tea, but definitely a number of epidemiological studies showing an association with reduced risk when it comes to colorectal cancer. Wow, I'm floored so much. My head is full. <laughs> um, after we come back, Dr. Keats will talk to us about how naturopathic doctors are able to prescribe fitness plans to their patients. So stay tuned. We'll be back. Getting regular health checkups with your doctor, like your annual physical exam, may be more important than you might know. They can be helpful in helping your doctor to identify those small risk factors before they become larger problems. And that can be helpful because then your doctor can put in a prevention strategy. Don't be a stranger. Schedule an appointment with your physician for your checkup today. Welcome back. Right before the break, we mentioned that naturopathic doctors might be able to prescribe fitness plans to their patients to prevent colorectal cancer. Dr. Keats, can you explain further? How sure. can fitness plans help to prevent cancer? Sure. So um, when it comes to, to exercise, there's definitely an association with cancer, um, reduced cancer risk when it comes to colorectal cancer. And <clears throat> the biological kind of rationale for that has to do with immune support one. So um, maintaining uh, adequate exercise regimen is associated with improved immune function. That makes sense. Again, it helps to reduce inflammation, another uh, method for reducing inflammation, which we talked about. 
Um, it also helps to reduce obesity, obviously, and maintain proper weight because there is a link between obesity and colorectal cancer. Mm. It also, lastly, another benefit, it helps to reduce insulin levels. So when insulin levels become chronically elevated, that insulin, that hormone, can actually act as a growth factor to, to cancer cells. Mm -hmm. So exercise helps to control those levels too. Okay. Um, so in, the, in this conversation around cancer and colorectal cancer specifically, we haven't really talked about folks who are on chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. What are some naturopathic um, things that can help for those, help those who are on chemo? Sure. So first of all, it depends on the chemotherapy that they're receiving. Okay. So when it comes to colorectal cancer, very common chemotherapy that we see is 5-fluorouracil or 5-FU. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other chemotherapy drugs that are used. Some colorectal cancer uh, some colorectal cancer patients will undergo surgical resection of the tumor. Some will undergo radiation therapy. Um, so we have to be very cautious about being specific with the treatment and making sure that it's not going to interfere with the treatment that the patient is actually receiving. Mm -hmm. So two things come, in, come to mind that are safe across the board. One is something simple, <clears throat> ginger root tea. So ginger can be very um, beneficial when it comes to reducing nausea and reducing any kind of gastrointestinal upset. So when it comes mm -hmm. to chemotherapy, a lot of times patients may experience um, no, uh, not only nausea, but maybe digestive trouble, more mm -hmm. gas and bloating. Mm -hmm. Ginger can help with something like that. Mm -hmm. The good thing about ginger too is that for patients that are taking anti-emetic medications like Zofran or Compazine or some of the others. Anti-emetic, like vomiting? Or, right, okay. medication to prevent nausea and vomiting. Okay. You can actually drink the green, uh, the um, I'm sorry, the ginger tea without uh, worries about interference. Mm -hmm. So there could be a, a synergistic effect with taking the medication and the tea. Okay. Uh, another thing that I think about that is safe across the board and very nourishing is bone broth. So bone broth can come from organic chicken bones okay. um, and then organic beef, but we talked about beef, right. so I That's would definitely thing. recommend organic chicken right. source. Uh, and bone broth is great because for, for many different reasons. One is that um, it's a rich source of amino acids and minerals. So a lot of times when patients are undergoing treatment, they may be experiencing nausea, taste changes, a lot of fatigue, and their, their diet may not be adequate. Mm -hmm. So with the bone broth, at least they're getting some nourishment there. It's a good source of protein. It helps to reduce inflammation, and, it, and it's also very nutritive to the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. So when we think about chemotherapy, it can be good at attacking the cancer cells, but mm -hmm. it also attacks the rapidly dividing cells like the gastrointestinal mm -hmm. cells. And so the idea of nourishing the, the GI tract is going to be key when it comes to, to chemotherapy. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much sure. for enlightening me, sure. enlightening us. There you have it, straight from the expert. Dr. Keats, thank you so much for coming to speak with us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, to all of our viewers, tune in next month when we talk about stress awareness. Again, my name is Dr. Abigail Ayapola. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on another episode of The Wellness Minute.